Welcome to this week's episode of Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science for Wednesday, March 6, 2013. Our top story comes from the world of genetics, specifically epigenetics. For some review, epigenetics is the study of proteins and other factors that regulate which genes in a cell are expressed. Scientists from the University of Pennsylvania have taken this approach in looking for a cure for diabetes. To a certain extent, each type of diabetes is a result of insufficient beta cells, which are in the pancreas and produce insulin. So one solution would be increasing the amount or production of beta cells, which is easier said than done, both with embryonic and adult-derived stem cells, creating beta cells with any efficiency has not been achieved, and you need a decent amount of the cells if you hope to transplant them as part of a therapy. However, the solution may come from the beta cell's counterpart, the alpha cell. They serve essentially the opposite function of the beta cell, producing a peptide hormone called glucagon, which increases glucose in the blood. So the scientists tried altering the gene expression of the alpha cells by blocking methylation. Methylation being a mechanism for gene regulation, the addition or subtraction of a methyl group to a molecule related to genes. In this case, it was blocking the methylation of certain histone proteins, the protein structures that DNA is bundled around. Without getting into the nitty-gritty details, both human and mouse alpha cells reacted by expressing certain beta cell markers and even producing some insulin. Hopefully, processes like this can eventually be developed into a treatment for humans, with type 2 diabetics needing to combine it with immunosuppressive drugs. Next, we have an update from the world of technology. Have you ever wanted a superpower? Well, some researchers over at the University of Illinois have been working on a project that likely started out with that idea in mind. It essentially is a device that acts as a kind of ultrasound sonar and then translates the detection of objects in the environment to transducers worn on the body. These transducers convert the information about the user's surroundings into a tactile sensation on the skin. If this extrasensory perception is sounding somewhat familiar, the researchers named the device SpiderSense. Currently, the prototype modules are a little bulky and connected to a control box for power and necessary calculations. With further development, the sensors and transducers could be made less conspicuous and connect to the control box wirelessly. In all seriousness, the technology does have real applications. For example, helping the visually impaired navigate their environment through a functioning sense. To that end, they tested the device blindfolded. The users were tested to see if they could detect approaching people and then throw cardboard ninja stars at them. <laughs> that test was successful, but outside. Indoor tests were less than successful, and the programming likely needs some tweaking. Still, this is a very exciting technology and could even be used by bike riders or car drivers, giving them additional information about their surroundings. Or it could be used to help fight bad guys. Either or. Last is a story from the world of medicine. An international team of scientists has uncovered the atomic structure of a naturally occurring antibiotic from a place you might not suspect. If you remember your high school biology, you may know that skin is technically part of the immune system and your first line of defense against pathogens. So it's not surprising that sweat produced by the skin actually contains a very powerful antimicrobial agent called dermocidin. This isn't news, but its exact structure is, and could be very useful in medical applications. As we've mentioned before, a major issue facing the medical world is bacteria evolving resistance to antibiotics, which has sparked interest in developing new strategies for killing microbes, including dermocidin. Now before you go collecting and drinking your own sweat, you should know the compound is structured to work within sweat. Relying on the salty and slightly acidic environment, it works by creating a pore in the cell walls of microbes. After which, excess water and the zinc ions from sweat can rush into the organism and kill it. Targeting the cell wall is what makes dermocidin so effective, as many organisms have similarities in the wall and it's much slower to change through the process of evolution. Previous studies have shown dermocidin to be effective against microbes that cause tuberculosis and some strains of multidrug resistant bacteria that are a major issue in hospitals. With the exact molecular structure known, the next step is developing other compounds based off it that will hopefully be as effective and long lasting. Well, hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please consider subscribing and be sure to check the links in the video description.